Ganga, Yamuna, Doab regions, West Bengal, the, the, the areas near, near River Chambal in the west, and parts of central India, and, and several small kingdoms which were lying between UP, that is today's modern Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, where nearly 18 kingdoms were conquered by Samudra Not only conquered, they were also annexed into his empire. In the second phase of the campaign, that is South Indian campaign, Samudra Gupta, where he is said to have proceeded through the forests of Jabalpur, he defeated the rulers of Oshala, Mahakantara, Vishtapura, Vengi, Palakka, the king of the king of Kanchi, that is Vishnu Gopa, then Devarashtra, Uttura, Avamukta, Pushasthalapura, And once he defeated them, Amitra Gupta, who was a great statesman and far-sighted, felt that it would be difficult to rule, to control such a vast empire. And he agreed to restore their kingdoms to them on the condition that they accepted his sovereignty. This is how he uh, established the feudal states as such in the South India. In the second Aryavarta campaign, Samudra Gupta defeated the rulers of especially Kamarupa, which is today's Asa, Kartipura, Kuma, Garbal, Nepal, Yaudeyas, Madrakas, Abhiras and Prarjunas. Altogether, nine states were conquered during this, apart from this, nine states were conquered where he expanded the frontiers of the empire. Here also, at the north, since it was difficult to con control the northeastern states, he gave back the kingdom, north Indian states and western states to the rulers and made them as his feudatories. Samudra Gupta maintained a very good relationship, rather friendly relationship, you can say, with the neighboring states, both in Indian states and foreign states. The rulers, Kushan rulers of Northwestern North India, the Shaka rulers of Western India, and the foreign rulers like of Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia, Sumatra, paid tributes and accepted friendly relationship with him, which further enhanced his prestige in Western land. He also maintained a strong navy besides a strong armed forces. The credit of reviving Hinduism goes to Samudra Gupta, especially the way he is said to have assumed the titles like Vikramanka, Maharaja, Diraja, and so on, and performed several Ashwamedha sacrifices to assert his suzerainty. Because of his expeditions, Samudra Gupta is described as the Nepal, Indian Napoleon, which will uh, take up shortly. There was all around the progress during his reign. Samudra Gupta provided not only political unity, but also administrative, administrative unity. And uh, where he established the strong administrative system and tax collectors and others. Besides, trade contacts were established with foreign countries like Roman Empire and Southeast Asian countries and, and, uh, where merchants were encouraged to 
trade with these foreign countries as a result of which a large amount of gold coins began to flow into the country which led to the economic prosperity which all this trade contacts also led to the cultural colonialism which began during his reign besides samudra gupta followed the policy of religious toleration which is endorsed by his court poet arisena who was a jain samudra gupta also gave patronage to the buddhist monks where sri lankan ruler was granted permission to construct monastery at bodh gaya with this policy of toleration led to the establishment of peace and order in his throughout his empire besides this music arts and architecture also were developed during the time of samudra gupta the coins issued by of samudra gupta justify where he is depicted playing veena and worshiping goddess vishnu lakshmi and other vedic gods and goddesses in some of the coins he has been shown as an archer a hunter with a battle axe and slaying tiger his coins are also the best specimens of the numismatic art samudra gupta built several temples like the dashavatara temple at deogad the vishnu temple at digawa and others the cave temples at ajanta and others most of these temples were built in a new style of art which is called as mathura school of art which developed during the time of samudra gupta he granted the permission to the sri lankan ruler by name mekha varma to build a monastery at bodh gaya for buddhist pilgrims he not only gave permission but also made donations towards the construction samudra gupta also patronized education literature learning and he himself was a poet and earned the title of kaviraja coming to the conclusion part of it during the time of samudra gupta there was all the progress which ultimately gave the gupta is the title of golden age of ancient india it really began the, during the time of the, the period of samudra gupta in the words of r c majumdar who described about samudra gupta that there can be no doubt that samudra gupta was a striking almost unique personality and he ushered in a new age in the history of india dr v a smith writes about samudra gupta in the following man way that samudra gupta was a man of exceptional personal capacity and unusual varied gifts he stands for a real man or a scholar a poet a musician and a warrior 
Dr. Smith also called him as the Indian Napoleon, but Samudragupta was more than that because he died unchallenged in the battlefield, unlike Napoleon who was defeated. He, according to the Arahabad inscription, composed by Parisena, who describes a, about Samatra Gupta that as a hero of 100 battles and that he was a born military genius and commander. And he was responsible for building of the temple which reached its zenith during, during his son's reign, which, that is Chandra Gupta II's reign, it further made higher progress. And undoubtedly, Samudra Gupta was a, not only a great ruler, but the greatness of the Gupta dynasty began with him and he made himself as Ekrat, that is the sole ruler, the only ruler in India at that time, who was brave, military genius, and also tolerant. So, but there was a lot of, I mean, economic prosperity, the social, so peace in the society. Though Hinduism was revived, yet, there was peace among the followers of Sanatana Dharma, Vedic Dharma, followers of Buddhism and Jainism. It is due to the efforts of Samudra Gupta, we can say that Rama epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata were rewritten to suit the contemporary conditions. And Buddha was regarded as an incarnation of Vishnu, which brought compatibility between the Buddhists and the Vedic people, that is Hindus as such. So this or the credit goes to Samatra Gupta for the greatness of not only Gupta Empire but also making India as uh, one of the the richest country during this period. Several arts and architecture, apart from music and others, also were developed during this period, which reached its peak further during the time of Chandragupta II. As I did. Again, also, the credit of reviving Sanskrit language also goes to Samudra Gupta. And the Indian culture as such began to spread during um, to foreign countries during his period. Thank you.